Some new information just into CNN. A senior defense official says Russian forces have completely withdrawn from the Kyiv and Chernihiv regions of Ukraine to, quote, reconsolidate and refit in Belarus and in Russia. Let's get some insights now from retired Major General, CNN military analyst Dana Petard. He's also the author of Hunting the Caliphate, America's War on ISIS and the Dawn of the Strike Cell. General, grateful for your time today. So the Pentagon uh, now says the Russian forces are completely gone from here, moved back up to Belarus, completely gone from here, Cherniv, most of them gone back into Russia, uh, gone to refit and reconsolidate. But from your assessments, how long and where next? Well, good afternoon, John. Uh, in fact, they have moved from the, uh, the Kyiv region. Uh, the dilemma for the Russians, though, is they're trying to reposition uh, to the east. And if you look at the, the outer uh, map of Ukraine, you see they have what's called exterior lines. So they have longer to go to get to, mm -hmm. to eastern Ukraine, while the Ukrainians have uh, interior lines, which means they have less to go. So as they reposition and hope to reconstitute, it will take weeks to be able to do that. However, some forces are already there in the east. Right, there are forces here in the east, and you see uh, more shelling in Kharkiv here, uh, more shelling in Mykolaiv down here. Now, they're separate, but if you connect them with a loop right here, this is what the Pentagon believes, and then ultimately onto Odessa, and the Ukrainians believe as well that at least for now, uh, the Russians did not succeed in their effort to take Kyiv, but it looks like they're trying to seize a big slice in the east. What is the strategic significance? Yes, in fact, you'll see that the, the city of Slovyansk is going to be pivotal in the future, as what the Russians are going to try to do is, is link the, the Donbass region with um, not just the east, but the south towards Odessa. Um, and what they're going to want to do is claim that as a victory uh, in time for the 77th uh, anniversary of the end of World War II, which is May 9th, 1945. Uh, so, what they're strategically going to try to do is link the two, and they may claim victory and even claim a separate republic. And we'll see what happens. And as, that, as we watch this play out on the battlefield, NATO foreign ministers are meeting right now. There are some new sanctions today, but the Ukrainians are saying, great, any sanctions on Russia are fabulous, but we need more military hardware. We need more offensive weapons. You've been sending, they're telling the West, uh, weapons that help us defend. Uh, but if we're going to kick the Russians out of these red areas, retaking land requires a different set of weapons. What should NATO do now? Well, I believe that what NATO is doing is certainly not enough. Um, at this point, uh, the goal should not be just to end the fighting. The goal should be for Ukraine, Ukrainian forces to actually win. In order to do that, they'll need more than just tanks here, drones there, javelin missiles. Uh, they need systems. Uh, they need training. They need assistance. Uh, so there are a number of options that NATO can do at this point. One is the use of special operations forces as advisors, uh, who also bring in intelligence capability, drones, um, and, and other combat enablers. Forgive me for for, the forgive me for, get on the offensive. Forgive me for interrupting, sir, but that would be special operations forces. You mean within the borders of Ukraine? So that would be either U.S. or NATO boots on the ground, which the political leadership to this point has said no. Yes, uh, the political leadership has been intimidated by by President Putin uh, on the threat of nuclear weapons. But we've already heard from Russia. Uh, they've said they're not going to use nuclear weapons unless Russia is threatened, Russia itself. Um, so uh, right now, NATO and the U.S. are intimidated by that. Um, it is time for the U.S. and NATO to step up. There's other things that the U.S. can do. Uh, one is to establish with the Ukrainian government uh, um, a, a, a coordination for um, assistance um, for Ukrainian refugees. That would be a humanitarian assistance zone in western Ukraine. And that would mean NATO troops on the ground as well as um, uh, no-fly zone over western Ukraine. Provocative ideas. General Pertard, always grateful for your insights and expertise. We will continue this conversation. Ahead for us, though, a Justice Department crackdown on criminal Russian activity, including new charges against the Russian oligarch. Plus, we're live on the ground in Lviv. New Russian attacks there targeting fuel storage facilities.